one dimensional objects. Okay. So one dimensional means one space dimension. Okay. Right now we were talking about zero dimensional point particles, but zero dimensional. So uh, Now, we want to talk about So, here is a open string, here is a closed string. As it propagates along tau, this is sigma here, this is sigma. So, you have sigma, the length, and as it propagates, it describes a burst sheet, right? Here, for a closed string, for the open string, it need not be a straight line. It, it is just some, okay? So, there are two free ends, okay? For the open string, this is along sigma or this is the sigma direction and there are two open ends. However, for a closed string, the end point com comes back onto itself. So, it is closed and sigma is now, sigma is along this direction. So, it makes a closed loop. Now, when this would propagate like this, then it would describe a bird seed which would be a tube. When this object propagates in the ambient space time, in the background space time, then this describes a bird seed. Okay? It is not a tube. Alright? Okay. So, <coughs> now how do we, here we were able to parameterize it, this bird line by tau. So, bird line is parameterized by tau. And then you consider the embedding of this bird line onto the space time, which is coordinated by x mu of tau. Now we have a bird seed for, for the, so this was, this is for, this is for zero dimensional objects, this is for one dimensional objects. This here you have parameter tau and sigma, one additional parameter which describes the length of the string, and here you have x mu, x mu is a function of tau and sigma. Both I could even write it as sigma alpha, I could even write it as x mu sigma 0, sigma 1, all these different names you will find in the literature. So, sigma 0, sigma 1, they are just the components. So, that means there is a very important point here. This sigma alpha is a alpha vector in the word seed space. Sigma alpha, Sigma alpha equal to sigma 0, sigma 1 or sigma 0, sigma 1, sigma 2 or sigma 0, sigma 1, sigma k. Okay, or sigma k. So, this is just bird seed. Okay. For bird line, it was just sigma 0. Sigma 0 was tau. Okay, this was bird line. Okay, so sigma alpha is a alpha vector in the bird seed space. 
You see, we are having two spaces, the target space and the word sheet space. So obviously, this sigma alpha is scalar with respect to the target space. It has no index mu. Some authors, they prefer not to give this uh, Greek indices to this. They like to give some other indices like A, B to dis distinguish them from the from this vector mu. But as long as we understand them, then it's fine. Okay, uh, I'm a little bit more used to to this. So alpha, I am not using in the word sheet space. Okay, because we have uh, too much limitation of these uh, letters. Okay, mainly this you have Roman letters and Greek letters which are being used conventionally by all the all the physicists. So uh, and now. But x mu would always remain a x mu, whether it's sigma 0, sigma 1, sigma k. So, this you have, uh, you have point particle or b0 wing, and here you have x mu of tau, and if you have a one dimensional string, it is d1 here, it is x mu of tau and sigma or sigma 0, sigma 1. Is this concept very clear? Because we have been talking about relativistic point particles all the time so far and we want to extend our ideas to the concept of strings which are one dimensional objects. So we have two kinds of these strings open with both ends free like this. Here both the ends are free or a closed string which is a loop. So one end comes back onto itself. Okay. All right. So and obviously if I have a loop here and if it propagates in the space time, it, it is going to describe me a tube of some kind. Okay. And open strings, if they move, then they would they would sweep out a. They, these are imaginary surfaces, okay. So the, actually, there is no surface there; it's only imaginary surface. So an open string will sweep out a word sheet, okay. Uh, even this is also called a word sheet, but if it's a closed string, it would be two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> I'm just uh, I'm a little bit confused about the structure that you put into this new dimension mm -hmm. because when you say something like oh it's a space like dimension this means that you already have some structure there so you can say the signature is positive for instance there's no signature if you have like no at least a standard bilinear form inside the space so what structure uh, Okay, I, I think I, I uh, nearly got the concept. Let me try to explain this and then you again, we come back to your question. It, it becomes clear to you. Now we have two spaces. Yeah. And so you, we will have two metric tensors. One in the word sheet space and one in the space time or the ambient space time or the target space or the background, background space time, whatever you like to call. In the literature, you will find all the names. Target space time is uh, different than the bird sheet space time. So when the particle moves in the, it, it traces out a word line and this word line is mapped onto the target space. When a string moves, it sweeps out an imaginary surface called a word sheet. This is being described by two parameters, sigma 0 and sigma 1 or tau and sigma. Okay. So tau is obviously this is the flow of time here, okay, along this as it evolves, as it moves from here to here. So tau is moving like this, but sigma is only this, okay. So there is a sigma along this and tau. And the same thing here, this is the sigma, length of the string is here, 0 to L or where L is some arbitrary length. And it propagates along this, so it evolves along the flow of time tau. So we are going to have two spaces and therefore we have two different metric tensors. And actually they are both related and this is what we are going to see now. And as we saw 
then the we have described our action so far for the relativistic point particle in two different ways one was involving a square root which we called as namu oto type action and the other one we called as polyopop type action okay they are called types so which does not involve a square root and in the polyopop type we introduce an auxiliary field the we will do the same thing here therefore to my mind it's very important to understand very very clearly with as much clarity as possible the relativistic point particle then string theory would make sense to us then we would know what we are talking about otherwise we may be lost okay so <coughs> now uh, th these are higher dimensional objects th which are called bird volume okay but let us not talk about them at the moment okay let us talk only about these two so if you like let me let me explain it in a slightly different manner which i had maybe said on the very first day that in quantum mechanics or classical mechanics you have qi of t pi of t okay right and here now in field theory when you go you have phi of x mu phi of x mu okay okay so these were uh, this would describe you mechanics classical or quantum okay and this would describe you field theory classical or quantum so here phi and the canonical momentum pi they are functions of 